Happy iPhone 15 launch day guys. I hope everyone got their new fancy phones. Today of course I want to unbox and review the regular iPhone 15 and in case you're wondering why I did not get one of the fancier pro models, well I did explain my reasoning in a previous video but basically I don't plan to replace my 14 Pro Max, that's what's currently recording this video, it's a fantastic iPhone, and frankly there were not enough changes with the 15 series to get me to upgrade. However, I was interested in checking out the regular iPhone because, unlike last year where the 14 was basically an iPhone 13s, actually it was even more minor than an S upgrade because technically there was no new SoC inside, and so yeah, that was a very disappointing refresh. But the 15 does catch up in many ways and now offers 90% of the flagship experience. And so yes, I want to review this because for £800 slash dollars, you're not missing out on much. Now frankly speaking, I was planning to get the green initially because I love myself some mint greens. However, I ordered too late and the green was already seeing shipping delays. Whereas the black and blue were available for launch day delivery and of course, I'm not getting that fake blue that basically looks like white. I'd rather get the matte black and see how it compares to the Space Black 14 Pro Max. So yeah, let's unbox this guys, enough of the waffle. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. Now the packaging itself is very plain and typical for iPhones, as you can see it's super thin because there is no power brick in the box. But anyways, let's pull on these tabs and get into the actual device. So here we go. Ooh, already very satisfying experience pulling those tabs. Anyways, let's shake the box. And there we go. There is the iPhone 15. Now there does seem to be something around the camera module. Is that a speck of dust? I hope it is. Uh, let me just wipe it. Yeah, that is. Okay, for some reason, two years in a row now, I've had a speck of dust randomly on my new iPhone. But anyways, the finish itself looks incredible wow i am in love of course you have the matte sides with the matte back and oh my god this phone is really clean yeah i'm kind of glad i got the black because this is a terrific colorway and especially if you're going caseless i would actually go with this it does look and feel very nice now first impressions with the rounder corners on the 15 it does not feel that different i'll be honest I think the aluminium iPhones actually did not dig into your hands as such. I do need to get hands on with the titanium pros and see how they feel in the hands. But one thing I always love about the regular phones is how lightweight they are because obviously I'm coming from a 14 Pro Max. That is a gym workout trying to hold it for hours on end. But this is so light and so nice in the hand. Yeah, I'm loving this design. And honestly, this matte finish makes a massive difference to how the regular phones are perceived because these are expensive phones at the end of the day, but in the past, they haven't really looked like 800 pound phones. They do usually look a little cheaper compared to the pro phones, but this time, guys, this basically feels like a pro device. Anyways, putting this to the side, let's delve into the actual contents of the box. You have the usual pamphlets and, oh, Interesting, I thought Apple was getting rid of plastic, but clearly the Apple stickers live on. That's awesome news. And as for the other stuff, it's just your usual instruction manual. Anyways, the star of the show for the box contents anyways, is of course the braided cable. So yes, we finally have a braided cable in the iPhone box. It feels very, very nice. Now, unfortunately it's not color matched as was rumored, but at the end of the day, it's braided and that's what matters. And we also have USB Type-C to Type-C because, yes, big news, the iPhone has a USB-C port. That is crazy to see, actually. It's kind of trippy that, you know, we've been seeing so many renders of USB-C iPhones and we finally have an iPhone that has the port. Anyways, let's peel this right now, so let me get close to the mic. Ooh, that was a good peel. Very nice peel. And I've seen the phone in its full glory, guys. This is such a clean device. Wow. I am falling in love, really. And also, I do want to say, I am missing the smaller size. I am kind of getting bored of the Pro Max. So that's why I'm partly waiting for the 16 series, because we already have rumors the regular Pro is not only getting slightly bigger, but it's also getting the new 5X the 15 Pro Max has. And so that might be the phone I buy, but at the same time, guys, as I've been saying for a while now, 
These regular phones finally have basically everything I need. I have the island, the 40 megapixel camera, the 2X, and the matte finish on the back. Yeah, I honestly think this 15 might actually be fine for me, but we'll see when I actually review this phone after using it for a few days. And while I don't have a regular iPhone 14 or 13 right now, as you can see, this is usually how the back of those phones looked. It's a glossy finish and it attracts tons of fingerprints. It gets very mucky, but this, oh, very, very nice satin matte back. I'm loving this. I'm really loving this design. Anyways, let's now power on the device. Ooh, okay. I thought it was out of charge for a minute, but it's working. No worries. Taking a while. And there we go, we're inside the device. Now I'm sure you guys know how the iPhone setup process works by now, so of course I'm gonna spare you some time and do this off camera, but I do wanna mention the bezels are pretty much on par with the 14 Pro, and the slight curvature on the sides is quite nice with the glass, but we'll see how that works with screen protectors. And by the way, yes, I still think 60 Hertz is a non-issue on this device. I'm coming from a Pro Max with ProMotion, and honestly, I can't tell much of a difference. It feels just as good in my humble opinion. Anyways, let me set this up and then of course, I'll delve into my closing thoughts. One eternity later. Put dark mode on because dark mode everything and we're done. But yeah, first impressions wise, I'm just in love with this design. The slightly rounded corners, but more importantly, the size difference. Like I'm coming from a Pro Max, so the smaller size is, oh, just feels so good and it's so much more lightweight compared to the Pro Max. Also the matte finish. This is peak iPhone design people. I really love this and 60 Hertz, not an issue. I like the island. I like the thinner bezels. The regular 15 is great value this year in my opinion. Oh actually there is one thing I want to check which is the um, cycle count. How do you check that? Let me check around. Uh, yeah, we go. Okay, so now in case you weren't aware, you can actually check the cycle count directly on the phone. Previously, you needed coconut battery to do such things, but no, now Apple provides this natively on the iPhone. That's quite nice because, of course, iPhone 14 Pros had tons of battery health issues. So hopefully with the 15 series, we do get better battery life. Obviously, Apple doesn't say that, but I'll be testing the regular 15 and seeing how it is in terms of data usage. But I'm expecting battery life to be pretty good because this does not have the always-on display and it's also 60 hertz. Anyways, that's about it, guys. Let me know in the comments if you want me to test anything on this phone. And on that note, make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one.